Hi, and welcome to uh, tonight's Ottawa Experts. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Bradley. Uh, tonight we are talking about debt and what you can do to get to do about it. Um, so debt can be overwhelming for many people. Uh, it affects more than just your financial situation. Uh, there's, uh, it affects things like your health, uh, your relationships, and just basically your overall quality of life. Um, if you currently are in debt and uh, you're not sure what to do about it, please give us a call tonight at uh, 613-728-1001 and ask our experts uh, how you can get control over it. And joining me tonight is credit counselor Tom Chambers. Uh, good you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Uh, Troy Tisseran, who is managing partner with Four Pillars Consulting Group. Hello. Thank you. And mortgage agent Steve Sagan. Steve, Steve Daigle. Steve Daigle. I am sorry. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so debt levels in Canada right now are all time high. Uh, it doesn't seem to be going down. Um, why is that? Troy, why do you think that? What, what are the causes of these? Well, high right now in Canada, you have uh, the um, you know the amount of debt to disposable income is around 160 percent. So when we look at what's happening in Canada, we actually have more debt now than what the Americans had before they had that meltdown. So right. it's definitely top of the radar. Um, I think governments at just about every level are looking at that and saying, why is it such an issue right now? And you know, some of the things to look at is um, how we've evolved. So, you know, if you look at the average budget that an individual had in 1960, mm -hmm. they had eight items on there. Right. So it was very simple for them to budget. Now that same budget will have 20 to 30 items. And there's lots of little incremental things in there that, that eat that up. And they're not compensating for that in their lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else like that? Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing that's driven a lot too is interest rates right mm -hmm. now are at an all-time low. So. Right. What happens when interest rates go down is your minimum payments go down. So before you could cover the minimum payments for twenty thousand, well now you can hang on to forty thousand and have payments that are very similar. Right. So it's gotten a lot, a lot easier to carry a lot more debt. Yeah. More and more, you're seeing now even vehicle loans. Um, right. Eight years they'll do financing for right now. In a lot of cases, the car won't even be running, and you'll still have a payment on it. So it's it's getting easier and easier to keep your payments low yeah. and carry debt at the same time. The concern, of course, is you know what happened when these rates go back up, and then how are we going to deal with it? Right. So speaking of debts, uh, as a mortgage agent, interest rates obviously are always the big thing. And with the low, do you find people are well, it's, stretching themselves? There are some people, yes. Some people, yeah. no. There's also uh, some people that they just, you know, they want to get the biggest house they can afford. They always have to have the newest cars. Right. And now with houses are getting more and more expensive, I think people are stretching themselves. And it's important to just kind of step back and say, do I really need to have that huge single detached home and mm -hmm. have two brand new cars in the driveway. Right. Um, so Troy, can you just tell us how you help people with debt? What is it? Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've been around for 12 years. So what, what we look is we have a very holistic approach to helping people with debt and it's not really just about the debt problem. So, so for us, there's a, there's a bigger opportunity right. uh, because what a lot of people don't realize is they've dealt with their debt and then what happens? So as a mortgage broker, you guys will see, you know, people will come in with bad credit and now what? They're, they're really, they've fixed one problem and now they have another right. barrier. So what we look at doing is creating processes where we deal with the debt. There's an education process in there around budgeting. What does it mean to have credit? Why is it important? And then really setting them up to be successful on the backside. Okay. So for us, it's all about kind of that full circle approach and it's been very successful for us. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Tom, as a credit counselor, what exactly does a, a credit counselor do, I think? Great question. Yeah. Um, it's an industry that's getting more and more known, never yeah. as much known as we'd like it to be, but our name certainly does get out there. Uh, we opened up uh, Credit Counseling Society in 1996, so 18 right. years ago, and uh, we're a not-for-profit organization, so we try and help with money management, budgeting, financial educations and certainly with debt solutions. Okay. Um, to give you a bit of an idea, so it's a free uh, appointment, it's fully confidential. What would happen generally in an appointment if someone would sit down to us, go through their finances, so we'd ask them what their goals are, what they're hoping mm -hmm. to get accomplished, we'd go through a detailed monthly budget with them, right. um, so make sure we're getting a very clear look at their situation. Then we try and go through solutions and options, so we give them a variety of options, we talk about the pros and we talk about the cons, mm -hmm. so we're very transparent to make sure they know the ins and outs of everything that they're getting into. Exactly. And then, uh, much like Troy just mentioned, that we try and make sure that we're not just getting rid of the current debt, but setting themselves up so it doesn't yeah, come back, right? right? Exactly. We don't want repeat customers. It's not that we don't like you. <laughs> it's like we'd rather you come back and say that you're out of debt and $50,000 in the plus. It's like a graduation, say, right? Go on yeah, exactly. to the world. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's better yeah. than saying they came back with seven cars and they haven't paid them exactly. off for anything yeah. like that. Yeah. You want to get them off the wheel, <laughs> yeah. right? You want to get them on the standing on their own and on their own two feet. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> uh, so, Steve, uh, a mortgage agent, most people wouldn't think mortgage agent just does mortgages and that's it. But, I mean, that role I, I, is really definitely expanding. Uh, in yeah, terms we of deal that. with a lot of people that have a lot of debt, yeah. and when they come see us, often it's a little bit too late. Yeah. It's always better to deal with your problems as soon as it starts, instead of waiting till you're, you know, you're avoiding your mail, you're avoiding all the phone calls. Right. You know, <laughs> so if usually when they come see me, I'll sit with down, down with them, make a budget, and then uh, the first thing is usually we will look at their current mortgage. And often people don't know, but their mortgages have options like skip a payment or if they've taken advantage of right. their prepayment privileges, they can take like a mortgage payment vacation. Right. And it's also good to contact the mortgage lender because they're gonna be much nicer to you if you speak to them now and explain the situation than if you wait till later yeah. when you've missed a bunch of payments and they don't know because they're there to help you. They're gonna make a plan right. with you. And what do you, is there a common thing that you see that is causing people today to be going more and more into debt? I think it's uh, it's very easy to get unsecured credit cards. Yeah. And the government's really clamping down on mortgages. They've changed a bunch of rules, mm -hmm. but you can walk into a bank and get a $10,000 credit card. Right. So I think that's really the issue. Yeah. And what about you, Tom? Is there, what are kind of the, the issues that you see that lead that are leading people into the down this path? There's so many. I mean, one that was just mentioned right there is access, right? It yeah. is more accessible than it ever, ever has been before, and uh, they're quick to increase your limits if things are going good. Exactly. You'll wake up the next day and it's up $25,000. So it's, uh, it's a big concern, but there's a lot of things that can just happen in day-to-day -day life. It can be divorce is a very big cause that we mm -hmm. see for financial issues. Uh, job loss, reduced income, layoffs, those are big ones. A lot in Ottawa we've experienced, of course. Yeah. And uh, just day-to-day yeah. -day things, unforeseen expenses that weren't prepared for. You know, bolstering your budget and having, like was mentioned by Troy, room yeah. for auto repairs, home repairs, they might not be in the budget. And when those things come up, a lot of times they end up going on credit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you find that, you know, the reason why they're at that point is that you know they've extended themselves they, they're not leaving themselves a cushion is that something that you see i mean like you, you mentioned like an auto repair you know like is it people are leaving paycheck to paycheck they're not putting that uh, any savings yeah exactly yeah. i mean it comes to a point where there's just not enough of a cushion being made yeah. i mean a lot of people when they think of their budget they think of their bills that they have but right. they're not thinking of those extra expenses the emergency I mean, fund yeah. exactly you need to set aside for it i mean every budget should have a little bit going aside right. so when those things come up you're reaching for a savings account instead of for a, a credit card right and i think it just kind of creeps up like people maybe their car broke down they have to fix it and then then they have to pay for something else, yep. put it on the credit card, they have to pay for something else, it kind of happens in a bunch, and then the next thing you know, they're, they're in trouble. Yeah. yeah what, what we've seen is where, again, coming back to that accessibility for credit cards, people think differently about money than they used to even 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, you know, you went to your bank, you got cash, and you literally divvied that out all week long, and right. now it's interact. So we don't really see our money anymore, and that's really changed how we relate to it. Mm -hmm. So. So what people do now, as opposed to having cash in the bank where they might earn 2%, they use that money for other parts in their, in their family living, in their lifestyle, and they rely on the credit card. Right. So what they're doing now is the credit cards are used as the safety net. It's no longer having what, what, what we used to talk about, which was three months of your annual or your monthly salary in a bank account. Mm -hmm. That's, we never see that anymore. And you've seen that over the last probably 15 years. Savings are at an all-time low. Uh, the lowest since they've been since uh, World War II. Yeah, and, and I, I think some of the reason cause of that is just inflation and wages aren't going up, but the cost of living continually increases, right? So I think it's just putting a squeeze on most people. You know, it's uh, that's right. It's like the budgeting from from the '60s where you had eight items and now you have thirty. Exactly. Um, you look at income. So your income's gone up by 850 percent since the early 1960s, mm -hmm. but but the uh, cost of a house is now 1800 percent. So houses have actually increased double in comparison to what the wage is. Yeah. So you're, you're seeing an offset there where your living costs for mortgages and, and running your household are a lot more than they are relative to what people's income is. Right. And it's squeezed that budget considerably. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at what point should someone say, you know what, I have a problem with debt, I need to get help? Uh, Tom, what, at what point should 
Well, there's numerous points. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of warning signs that you can look for when it comes down to that. So one thing is if you're only paying the minimum payments on your debts, that's one we should all keep an eye out yeah. for because they're set up pretty tricky. <laughs> when you're paying your minimums, the balance isn't really going down on those yeah. accounts. So if you're at a spot where that's all you can afford, that debt's going to linger for longer than you probably want. Mm -hmm. And as other expenses come up, it's going to be more difficult to manage your accounts. Um, not having savings, though, we just mentioned. Yeah, that's a yeah. big warning sign, too, because you're not prepared for those unforeseen expenses. They always come up. It's one mm -hmm. thing or it's another. And um, you know, having that savings is very important. So that's a warning sign that you're getting close to the time to, to look into things. One thing you see a lot, too, is uh, you might know the saying, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's yeah. juggling, right? You might need to use one credit card to pay the other, or you might pay the hydro bill this month and the gas bill next month. And if it's getting to that point where you don't have enough money just to cover your minimums, it's definitely a time to look into your options and what you can do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, is there like a, a no, uh, like a, a too far gone point? You know, like is there? Never. never. There never is. Yeah. There, no. You can never go too far. Um, there's always something that you can do. And I know it can be a feeling of hopelessness sometimes yeah. when things have gone that far, but it's not something you should worry about. There's always options available. We're a great country for that. You mm -hmm. just have to know what's available and what the best one is. And that's where seeking professional help can be of a very big benefit yeah. to make sure you get through It's always that. better to look for help than to just kind of ignore it and then it's just going to get worse and worse. Yeah. And no matter how bad your situation is, chances are like people like us that work in the industry, we've seen worse. So nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Just make sure you, get, you reach out and get some help. How do you feel, uh, Troy, is there, do you see a certain pattern or a reason why people don't want to get help? Well, there is denial. So I think we talk about death and we talk about that. I think there's yeah. a lot of fear around what does it mean and, and a lot of people there's a lot of uh, uh, fear around you know how do I talk to somebody about the mistakes because really when you when you've got to that point where you're you're feeling like your 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 debt has gone too far it's it's you're, you're really looking at all the mistakes that you've made so they might be you know a business failure it could be divorce it could be all sorts of stuff and that can be really difficult for people to open up and say I think I have a problem uh, and that's really the first step to really coming, you know, coming up with a plan that says, okay, how do we get you out of this? You're at point A. How do we get you to point B, which is you're now at a better place? Mm -hmm. and, and it's that first step, which is always the hardest, but that opens up the doors for new opportunities. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that's a, you know, that's a good point is that you know, we need to stop. Uh, we got to remove the taboo of finances uh, amongst people, families, yeah. uh, marriages. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that we need to, to speak about. I think. Uh, and I think even in school, like you learn about a bunch of other subjects, but they don't teach you basic finances, you know, how to, how to balance your budget, right. how to invest in mutual funds, how to deal with life insurance and all that. So I think that's something that yeah. people should really teach their kids. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky. I, had, uh, I took an entrepreneurship class in high school and my teacher, Mr. Rogers, thanks. <laughs> uh, he said, uh, made a point, said you can take $20 a month and spend it on junk or put that away and you know by the time you go to retire you'd be a millionaire and that's something that's always kind of stuck in my head uh, yeah. and that doesn't happen for a lot of students uh, you know even from high school all the way to university you know there's people that have uh, business degrees that just don't have a basic understanding of finances yeah. and uh, I know Canada is starting now going in the first step with the first uh, with the uh, financial, literacy. Uh, financial literacy leader thank you uh, appointing uh, her and, and really kind of making a big push for financial literacy um, do you find, Tom, that your clients have any kind of uh, basics at all? It's all over the map. Some yeah. people are great and it's just life uh, circumstances that came up and others are at a lower level. But I mean, like was just mentioned, it's not something that you're born with. It's something you have to learn right. and you can be excellent in many areas of your life. But unless you take the time to learn about finances, you're not going to master it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all over the map, but it's never too late to learn. And it's a big part of what yeah. you know, our organization does is to really get you that financial education to, to be able to manage your finances. Um, it's a big thing. Um, stress related to debt, it's, it's massive. You yeah. know? Um, like you said, it's a very taboo topic. People keep it inside and it impacts your sleep, your home life, your work, and it, it's always stress. dragging you down. Exactly. So yeah. to be able to get out there and really deal with it and take control of your finances, it's a really rewarding feeling. It absolutely is, yeah. Uh, well, we got to take a break now, so come right back. And if you have any questions, you can give us a call at 613-728-1001.